Hi friend, I think everyone sometimes faced the problem how to increase the output current of the power supply. For example, you have a 19 volt adapter from the laptop that provides an output current, for example 5 amperes. But you need a 12 volt adapter with a current of 8 to 10 amperes. Recently, I needed a power supply unit with a voltage of 5 volts and a current of 20 amperes. I had a 12 volt power supply for LED strips with an output current of 10 amperes and I decided to redo it. Yes, of course you can assemble the desired power source or use a 5 volt bus of any cheap computer power supply, but I think it will be useful for many to know how to increase the output current or amperage of almost any impulse power supply, so let's go ahead. Honestly, I prefer to make power sources from scratch rather than redoing factory ones. But the product created at home not always looks solid because of poor quality of printed circuit boards. In this case, it's better to order the printed circuit boards at the factory. It's easier and cheaper. GLC is the largest manufacturer of printed circuit boards of any complexity. The boards will be made according to your Gerber files in the shortest time. By the way, recently the company has reduced the cost of its services. Prices for printed circuit boards have decreased by 30%, stencils for solder paste by 20% and shipping by 10%. Hurry up to order the board at the best prices. A link to the GLC website can be found in the description. Typically, power supply circuits for laptops, printers, all kinds of power adapters for monitors and so on are single cycle type. Most often they are flyback converters and don't differ in the structure from each other. There may be other components, another PWM controller, but the circuitry is the same. A single cycle PWM controller, most often from the UC38 family, a high voltage field effect transistor that pumps the transformer and at the output a half wave rectifier in the form of a single or a dual Schottky diode storage capacitors and a voltage feedback system. Due to the feedback, the output voltage is stabilized and strictly kept at the set limit. Feedback is usually built on the basis of an optocoupler and a reference voltage source TL431. Variation of the divider resistors lead to a change in the output voltage. This is general task and now what we have to do. I must say we will not increase the power. The unit has a power of about 120 watts. We are going to reduce the output voltage to 5 volts but instead increase the output current twice. We will have 5 volts and 20 amperes. As a result we get an estimated power of about 100 watts. We will not remake the input or high voltage part of the block. All the alterations will do only with the output part and the impulse transformer itself. First, I remove the electrolytic capacitors that stood at the output of the unit to replace them with capacitors with low internal resistance. But later, after checking, it turned out that they are not bad and have a rather low internal resistance, so eventually I soldered them back. Further, I unsolder the throttle and the pulse transformer. I will be able to unsolder the transformer without a tin pump. It's more convenient for me. The diode rectifier is quite good, 20 amperes. The best thing is that the board has a seat for the second diode. 
I didn't find exactly the same second diet. But recently I received from China the same diet in slightly another box. I inserted a couple, added a jumper, strengthened the tracks and got a rectifier for 40 amperes, that is, with a twice margin for current. These diets are for 200 volts, but it is not necessary. I just have a lot of such diets. You can use ordinary Schottky diet assemblies from a computer power supply with a reverse voltage of 30 to 45 volts or less. That's all with the rectifier. Let's go ahead. The throttle was wound with this wire. We throw it out, take this wire and make about 5 turns. You can use the same ferret rod, but I had another thicker one on which the windings were wound. The rod turned out to be slightly long, but later we will break off all that is unnecessary. Transformer is the most important and responsible part. Remove the adhesive tape, heat the core with a soldering iron on all sides for 15 to 20 minutes to loosen the glue and carefully remove the halves of the core. Leave all these for 10 minutes to cool down. Next, remove the yellow tape and unwind the first winding. Remember the direction of winding or just make a couple of photos before disassembling. They will help you. I didn't unsolder the other end of the wire from the pin. Then unwind the second winding and again don't disconnect the second end of the wire. After that, we will see a secondary or power winding. This is what we were looking for. We completely remove this winding. It consists of four turns wound by a bundle of 8 wires, each 0.55 mm in diameter. The new secondary winding will contain only 1.5 turns, as we need only 5 volts. We will reel up in the same way. I took the wire with a diameter of 0.36 mm in a quantity of 40 pieces. It's much more than necessary. Well, you can compare with a factory winding. Then we wind all the windings in the same order. Again, I will point out, be sure for the right direction of the winding, otherwise nothing will work. We should thin the wires of the primary winding before the winding begins. For convenience, each end of the winding was divided into two groups, so that don't drill giant holes for installation. After installing the transformer, we must find the TL431 chip. As previously said, it set up the output voltage. In its binding we find a divider, in my case one of the resistors of the divider consists of a pair of SMD resistors connected in series. The second resistor of the divider is installed closer to the output. In my case it's 20 kilo ohm. We replace it with an adjustable resistor of 10 kilo ohm. We must connect the power supply unit to the mains through a safety lamp with a power of 40 to 60 watts. At the output, we connect a multimeter and a small load. In my case, it is a pair of 5 watt 28 volts incandescent lamps. Very carefully, without touching the board, rotate the potentiometer until the desired output voltage is obtained. Now, turn off. 
wait for 5 minutes so that the high voltage capacitor on the unit is completely discharged. Then we take off the tuning resistor, measure its resistance and replace it with a constant resistor or leave it as I did. In this case we have the option of adjusting the output anytime. Next I lightly loaded the block, first with a car halogen, then with powerful lamps from the film projector. All this is done in order to understand how well the feedback works and as you can see the output voltage is very stable. After it is necessary to strengthen the tracks on the secondary part of circuit. It's desirable to reinforce them with the wire because the currents will be twice as large as before. Before I collected everything back I again soldered connections on the board although the soldering from the factory was pretty good. I applied thermal paste to the power transistor and rectifier diodes. By the way, if the diodes are like mine, they must be isolated from the case by a heat conducting gasket. The board is in the case. Now it's the time to test the unit. To do this, I made a load of nichrome which is able to squeeze out of the unit a current of 20 or more amperes. Current clamp will show us the actual value of the current and the multimeter the output voltage. Let's begin. We have just got the current of more than 20 amperes and without drop of the output voltage. During the off-screen measurements I pumped up to 23 amperes. When trying to get more the protection was triggered. That is, we can say that our rework was successful. Well friends, I hope the method will come in handy. If this video was useful then you can rate it and if you have any questions ask them in our official group. All links in the description. In the following videos you will find out why I needed such a high current 5 volt source. And on this I say goodbye until new meetings. With you as always was Kasyan TV.